I'll talk a little bit about uh, my background. Uh, so you may know me from uh, PyPy. Um, I gave a talk here like three years ago. That was lots of fun. Uh, well, that's also where uh, CFFI was uh, created. Uh, it was created as part of the PyPy project and is now much, much more popular than PyPy, surprisingly. So, um, yep. Uh, you can find me on social media as well, like if you want to ask questions, uh, telling me I'm doing a terrible job or telling me I'm doing a great job, uh, you can go on there. Um, and yeah, I'm going to talk about CFFI. Uh, the CFFI tagline is a way to interact with almost any C code from Python. So uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Um, so there's already a lot of libraries that um, allow you to interact with C in Python. Like you can write um, C extension by hand, you can use C types, you can use Cython, you can use Swig. There's like at least a dozen of them. So um, yeah, why should you use CFFI um, over all the things that are already exist? Um, so CFFI is trying to fix um, a few problems. Uh, so that was when uh, CFFI was created, those were the problems that existed and uh, that it tried to fix. So um, f there was uh, nothing that worked really well on both PyPy and CPython. Uh, C types worked kind of okay, and everything else just uh, didn't work. So uh, we needed a way to interact with C that worked really well on PyPy. And it also has to work on CPython because it fits, if it only works on PyPy, no one's going to use it. Um, it needs to be fast on PyPy because uh, people use PyPy for uh, mostly performance reasons. So uh, if it's that slow, then uh, there's no point in using uh, PyPy uh, and CFFI together. Um, so yeah, C types work on, worked on PyPy, but uh, C types, there's um, lots of magic involved in it. Um, it tried to guess uh, types for you sometimes if you don't specify them. And if it gets it wrong, um, it will just crash without any error message and just print segmentation fault. Like, great. It's not really like the um, Python experience. <coughs> so uh, yeah, we wanted to, be, to do something that was uh, safer and less magic and uh, not have platform uh, specific hacks. Because um, I know, for example, that uh, with C types, uh, depending on who, uh, on which platform you run, sometimes you can just works okay, sometimes it just set faults. So yeah, we need, we need something better. Um, something that's um, kind of simple to use. I mean, it still involves C, so you're still going to have to deal with um, all of C's madness, but um, at least it doesn't have more madness on top of the madness. And obviously, if it's if you need to have a tool that's like supposed to be uh, the one tool that works with everything, you need to support as many C features as possible. Um, yeah, that was one, also one of the things. Uh, you don't need to learn another language. Uh, you already need to deal with Python and C. Having a third language to have to fit in your head is a bit, uh, is a bit too much. So we just wanted uh, CFFI to just, just be Python. And uh, yeah, memory management, another fun, things, uh, fun thing from C. Um, so we didn't want to just have the C way of managing memory because uh, it's not something Python programmers are used to. And uh, it's very error prone even to just very experienced uh, C programmers. So um, yeah, let's see how CFFI addresses those issues. Um, CPython and PyPy are both first class citizen. It works exactly the same way. All of the features that work on CPython 
work on PyPy and the other way around. So yeah, you don't have to, I mean, you should probably still test both on PyPy and CPython, but um, it should quote unquote just work. Um, on PyPy, it's just ridiculously fast. Um, I think we did some benchmarks and um, it's like a bit slower than um, just having a regular C function calling another C function. Um, so if you need performance, you should just use PyPy and CFFI together. And um, on CPython, it's okay. Like it's not the fastest thing, but it's pretty, it's pretty decent. Um, but then, you know, if you're having performance issues with CPython, you should probably just use PyPy. And yeah, it doesn't make any of those uh, crazy and safe assumptions that uh, C types does. Um, so it doesn't try to guess the types for you. You have to specify the types all the time. And um, it won't seg fault because of uh, CFFI doing some crazy stuff. It's, it will probably be because of just, you know, C madness. <laughs> it's really simple to use. Most of the time, uh, you just need to say, uh, look at the man page or look at the header file of the function you're trying to uh, bind to. And you usually just need to copy paste uh, into your Python file and, uh, and that's it. It works with macros. It's something that um, C types doesn't do. Um, and yeah, you should like macros just work. Um, I mean, most of them work. It's uh, the, the macros that pretend to uh, sort of act like functions do work. And the ones that raise uh, values like integers or strings or uh, whatever also work. And um, it's just another Python library. So, um, you know, you don't have to learn another language. Um, not, nothing like that. And yeah, it, it's pretty much like the way you handle memory in CFFI is pretty much the same as uh, you would any other Python object, um, which can have a few pitfalls that I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much um, the way you would expect it to work in Python. So then you have three different modes that have um, different use cases uh, called ABI, API, and embedding. So um, we're going to look at uh, those three. All right, so let's say we have a header file. Uh, I took a very simple example. It's a printf. Um, so this is the definition of uh, printf, uh, the first one after the synopsis. And so how do we call printf from CFFI? Um, let's look at it in the using the ABI mode. So it's the simplest, most, uh, simplest mode to use uh, because it doesn't require a C compiler. Uh, it's uh, most similar to C types. So if you've used C types before, it's pretty much the same workflow. It's just you declare a bunch of uh, functions and types at runtime, and then you can directly, uh, directly interact with those. So uh, finally, code. Um, so, yeah, if you see you have a, um, you create an FFI object, use uh, cdef um, to put your declaration, um, your type declaration in it. So, um, yeah, that's literally just copy pasted from, uh, from the header file. Um, and then you do uh, ffi.dl open, um, that opens the library on which uh, your function exists. Um, Another special thing, uh, so I'm passing none, and that just loads the C standard library. So uh, yeah, it just finds the C library for you and does, um, and just yeah, gives it gives it back to you. Um, then uh, we do ffi.new, which is how you create, uh, which is how you like allocate memory uh, in CFFI, and. Uh, 
yeah, so uh, creating an array of character, which means like string in C, and we initialize it with world, and then we just call lib.printf the same way uh, you would call printf in C. So let's look at API mode now. Um, this is really the most powerful mode of uh, CFFI. Uh, you can access all of the features. Uh, so things like um, accessing macros, things like this. Uh, unfortunately, it requires a C compiler, uh, but only at build time. So you have a build phase uh, that will create a module for you, and you can just uh, then um, import that module um, at runtime like you would import any other Python module. Um, you can also plug it in with uh, like your setup.py file so that it's, uh, it's just one line to add to your setup.py file and uh, then it just works. Uh, yeah, the C compiler is also used for validation, so uh, if you declare your types, like if you make a mistake, it will not just say fault, you will have a proper compiler error and uh, you'll be able to fix those uh, with a, a decent error message. And yeah, works with macros, which is um, which uh, ABI mode doesn't support, and um, C types doesn't either. And a neat trick is that structures can be partially defined, so structures in C are basically like a rough like object dictionary, very like a very basic object dictionary type of thing, but the documentation doesn't necessarily tell you all the fields. And so if you use C types or uh, ABI mode in CFFI, you would need to declare all of the fields, uh, which is pretty, uh, pretty annoying. And so with API mode, uh, the compiler will just tell us um, all the fields. So you just need to declare the types you want to use. All right, let's look at um, another function. It's the same, it's not very interesting, but um, it's simple. Um, so this is a function that returns um, user information on Unix systems. Um, you give it a user ID and it gives you back uh, the username, password, all that stuff. Um, all right, so let's look at uh, API mode. So um, this is the compile script. Um, does it scroll for you if I do this? Okay. Um, so you start by um, calling set source um, that um, that's what uh, that's where you include uh, all of the header files that you that you're using. You, if you use uh, API mode, you have to specify uh, which header files you got your declaration from. That allows the compiler to do all of the, all of the necessary checks. And then uh, you call cdef again, uh, like we did in ABI mode. And uh, there you can partially define uh, the structure. So here I just define uh, pw underscore name, and then I say dot, 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 which means like figure it out to the compiler, and it just does. And then when you get that compiled, so you can just um, compile it by calling uh, dot .compile on the FFI builder, or you can just add one line to your setup.py file, which is probably what you should do if you use it in uh, like a real world production uh, case. So yeah, if you look, I do uh, FFI builder.set source, and the first parameter is underscore example. And so now, it creates a module called underscore example, and from that I can uh, import FFI and lib, uh, which were uh, the two things we were using uh, in ABI mode, and now it works exactly the same way. So we can just say lib.get pwuid of zero, uh, zero in Unix means root, and then uh, checking that uh, the name of the things we got back is root, and uh, that's the case. 
So then, uh, yeah, at runtime, it's the same as you use it the exact same way as ABI mode, except that, uh, yeah, you have that compile time phase uh, that does checks and uh, adds features. All right. Now, embedding mode. It's when uh, you have a C, um, C an existing code base, and you want to add um, Python to it. So you can just expose Python functions to C. Uh, you just need to add a declaration on top of those to say these functions take an integer, uh, an array of characters, uh, whatever, but then that function will just be able to be called from C. And uh, otherwise, it's just the exact same as um, API mode. Um, I didn't add an example because um, I'm trying to keep my uh, talk as like, you know, it's Sunday morning, I didn't want to put too much C, so uh, yeah. That's why like, if you want, you can look at the documentation if you want to, but uh, yeah, I think like the two most, the two most important modes are um, ABI and API. So let's talk about memory management. Uh, it's, always, it's always great to do that in, uh, in C. So there's two ways to manage memory, uh, or like more like three, but uh, let's talk about those. Um, first one is FFI.new, which is what the one I used um, when uh, in API mode earlier. Um, to allocate that uh, string. So it's pretty simple. You just say uh, ffi.new. The first thing you do is the um, C types you want to, you want to create. And then um, you can add a, an initializing value. So this, was, this will allocate an integer uh, with a value of, two, of 12 and then return a pointer to it. So uh, yeah, CFFI mostly deals with uh, pointers instead of uh, values directly. Um, yeah, so then what about um, arrays? So uh, it's the exact same thing, except that you allocate an array of integers. Uh, CFFI will figure out the size of the array for you. Um, so it's not something you have to deal with. And um, yeah, that's like, it does everything for you uh, in that case. Um, yeah, and for um, if you have structures, you should allocate the structure first, and then you can set the fields on that structure. And uh, Python owns the memory, which means that um, whenever your object goes uh, out of scope, if it disappears completely from Python, it will be freed, which most of the time is what you want, but uh, you have to be careful because um, if the C code you're giving uh, the memory to um, stores that pointer, then uh, and then it goes out of scope in Python, that me that memory will be freed, and if uh, the C code tries to access that pointer again, then uh, you're accessing a freed pointer, and then who knows what can happen. Then we have ffi.gc, so sometimes um, you call a library and it gives you a piece of memory back that you have to free at some point, or like you have to decrement a reference count or something like this. So ffi.gc um, allows you to basically not have to deal with that manually. Um, so you have a pointer, um, let's say yeah, a library gave you a piece of memory and then you just want to free it while you, when you don't have to deal with it anymore. So you can just um, give a pointer to ffi.gc, give a uh, function that's, that will basically be the uh, destructor, and it's the same thing. It will be called when Python uh, is done with that object. And uh, what if you want C to deal with the memory? Then you can just straight uh, use Python's malloc. Um, you know, you can just uh, define it in your uh, ffi.cdef, just define uh, malloc and then it will give you 
piece of memory that's managed by C. Okay, um, so now uh, I talked about calling uh, C, which is probably like most of the use cases around, but um, these days you have languages like Rust, like um, Go, where, um, like for example, I think it's uh, Sentry uses uh, Rust quite a bit, and uh, they uh, move, um, instead of writing their extensions in C, they write it in uh, Rust, and they interact with it using CFFI. Uh, they wrote a blog post about it if you're interested. So, most popular languages, uh, like Python is one of them, but like loads and loads of them, um, have a way of interacting with C. So either through a C API, like Python, or uh, yeah, Ruby, Lua, uh, Java, mostly languages with a virtual machine, or exposes code um, directly. So Rust, Go, I think, and a uh, bunch of other languages. Um, so yeah, they already have a uh, CFFA is a way of interacting with C, and they have a way of interacting with C. So we can just use C, like the C calling conventions and all of this to interact between those languages. And you can just use both with CFFI. Um, for the first one, uh, if you're interested in how to call a uh, C API uh, using CFFI, um, you can look at my GitHub. I wrote a uh, binding that allows you to call uh, C Python from PyPy, which is, uh, yeah, which is a pretty interesting trick. Um, it's a bit of a yeah, brain twister, but um, yeah, it's pretty interesting if you're looking at how at more advanced, um, more advanced uh, usage of CFFI. So yeah, let's look at Rust. Um, so this is a bit of uh, Rust code. Um, so it's just taken straight from the Rust documentation. So to, to expose a function, uh, a Rust function to, um, to the C wall, you need to do that like hash no mangle thing on top of the function, and then you need to say it's public and external, and then it's available. So that's how you do it uh, in Rust. You just compile this to a shell library, and then um, from Python, it's really simple. You just use it like you would any other C function. So you just, uh, so yes, yeah, you need to say a void process in that case, uh, which is like how the C, uh, how the function looks like from a C point of view. And then you can um, open that uh, shell library that you've compiled and just call the function. So that's in ABI mode, but you could do just exactly the same way in, uh, in API mode. All right, so um, you can call C from Python um, and then other languages as well. I just showed you Rust. Uh, you can call Python from C. Um, it supports most use cases, um, like, yeah. So yeah, as I said, I wrote a thing that allows PyPy and CPython to talk to each other uh, using CFFI, so that's a pretty advanced use case. So yeah, I mean, I haven't seen a thing that you can't redo in CFFI yet. Uh, I mean, give me a shout if you all think, uh, if the thing you're trying to, uh, bind doesn't work, and I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. Um, and yeah, you should check it out.